there. My name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path. I have a studio location in Forest City, North Carolina. I have a website called offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com and I've been here on YouTube for about the last 10 or 11 years. So thanks for joining me and welcome to my channel. Please make sure and hit that thumbs up button and the like button and subscribe to us so you can be up to date with all of our videos. This video is releasing on July the 4th, so if you are in the United States, Happy Independence Day, July 4th. Um, it's always a big time for celebration here in the States. Otherwise, happy day to each of you, and again, thanks for joining me. I'm going to be showing you how to make a beautiful bracelet today, and it's super adaptable because you can use any six millimeter size bead just about it to make this bracelet with. You are absolutely going to love this project, and it works up so quickly, and you will get lots of great compliments about, about this bracelet. So to make this bracelet, you are gonna need about two and a half yards of a 1.5 millimeter cording. Now that can be leather, that can be pretty much whatever you want to use. I'm using a waxed polyester cording that we sell. It's a quarter for a yard on our website. And so you can find direct links to that cord below in the description box. I've got direct links to everything that you're gonna see me use today. In addition to that cording, you're also gonna need a jewel loom or a loom of your choice. You are going to need about 68 to 78 six millimeter beads. So the reason it's 65 to 78 is because it's gonna depend on the size bracelet you wanna make. Uh, 78 beads is gonna put you at um, about a seven and a quarter. So you may need more if you need a bigger bracelet. You are also going to need a six by two barrel crimp. Now this is by Tierra Cast. We have four colors in those and again you can find direct links to them below in the description box. You're going to need a button that has a shank on the back of the button. You will need uh, your favorite beading needle and about an eight pound fire line, wildfire, whatever you like and make sure that it goes really well with the color of the polyester cording that you're going to use so it doesn't stand out really bad against the cording. Uh, maybe some good sharp scissors are going to be helpful to you and you can also use a little bit of your favorite glue if you need to but it is not necessary. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the bracelet that I'm going to be showing you how to make today. As you can see it is super sparkly if you use the cathedral cut beads on these. Really really sparkly. The ones I'm going to use today are a gold and like a metallic gold and a turquoise and aqua. Can't wait to see what this one's going to look like. I've also done another one here so you can see this one uses six millimeter pearls. So you really can do this and make it as fancy or as kind of laid back as you want. The bracelet is finished off with the button. So you'll have a button on one end. This is my current favorite from Tierra Cast, the little longhorn button. And then the other end is going to be finished off with a six by two millimeter Tierra Cast crimp. This is a barrel crimp. It comes in silver, gold, brass, and copper. So you really, really can make some beautiful finishes to your bracelets. The button will go into that little loop that we're gonna create here with the crimp to finish off your bracelet. So it's a really, really great piece to make and wear. You can see I've got my cord laid out here so that you can kind of see it. Um, and it's a little bit hard to see here, but this is Korean waxed polyester cord and it's a 1.5 millimeter. So I'm going to be using, this one is called Camel is the color that this one is called. And you can see here, I've got my eight pound fire line. I've got my beads here. The only other thing I'm going to use that I did not tell you about a minute ago is I'm going to use a little bit of this um, painter's tape. This is just going to make your life a little bit easier. So I have my jewel loom here. If you have never used a jewel loom, um, it comes complete, completely flat in a package. So to set your jewel loom up, you have a little bar and you hook one end of the bar into the hole here. 
and then you press it down and clip the other end of the bar end so it makes it rounded for you as you can see here so it's no longer flat I'm going to work with the bar in it today just because if I'm working with like a leather or some type of cording, I don't want it to stretch my cording. So I'm just going to work with that bar in there today. I've got a lot of other videos that show you how to take this bar out. So I'm going to take the end of the cord and I'm going to just make a simple basic knot here. And then I'm going to come around one of my tabs on the back of the loom and I'm gonna tie this tightly here around the tab. I'm gonna go ahead and put in another knot, kind of pulling that tightly. And then I'm gonna pull this cording tightly to myself. And when I say tightly, I'm pulling it very tightly because I'm wanting to make sure that it does not come loose as I'm stitching my bracelet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little piece of my blue painter's tape here. The reason I like the painter's tape is because it doesn't leave sticky residue. And I'm going to tape the end of my cord down, just like this. So it's not gonna damage this and it's not gonna damage my cord. So that's why I like it. So I'm going to come up and the great thing about this bracelet is you can pretty much eyeball you do not have to be 100% accurate, making sure it's straight. You can eyeball here to just kind of make sure that you have a straight line. And then I'm going to flip this over and come to the other peg on the back of my piece. And I'm just going to take the cording around that peg. I'm gonna bring this back to the front and then come across on my loom again. Now, you can take your bead and kind of lay the bead here to the inside, just to make sure that you're gonna have enough room for your bead. That's sort of how I kind of measure it out, just to make sure. And then again, I'm going to come to the back here, I'm going to wrap around this little peg, and then I'm going to make another warp. These are my up and down threads is what I call my warp here. So I have one, two, three on there. I need one more. So I'm going to bring this around the back of my piece again. And then to the front. And again, kind of make sure it's about the same distance away from the other cords. Okay. And then I'm going to wrap it around the cord or my peg here, but I have a little bit left. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of some of this little extra cord that I have and keeping my thumb here so it holds these cords down. I'm going to take this little end of my thread and I'm going to go under the four pieces of cording. And then I'm gonna take that little end and go back through the loop I just created, and I'm gonna pull that tight. And I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna go under the four cords, and I'm gonna take the cord and go through that loop and pull. And I'm going to do that mm, twice more, I think. Just enough to where you're very, happy and secure that it's not going to come apart as you're working with it because we're going to pull out these little cords here in a minute so then i'm just going to take another small piece of my painter's tape here and tape that end down so it's out of my way and now i have my four cords on my loom just like this and i am ready to start the process of the loom so I've threaded my needle with about two and a half yards of my eight pound fire line. And I am right-handed, so I'm going to start on this side of my loom. If you're left-handed, it's okay if you start on this side. So I'm gonna take my needle, that is for this project. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come under this first thread here all the way to the left. And I'm gonna bring the thread around 
Well, here we go. And I'm going to tie this thread onto this end piece of cord. Okay, and I'm gonna leave a little over an inch between the end of the bracelet and where I will actually start my bead. So I'm gonna leave about an inch or an inch and a half. And then I'm gonna put a little another knot in here. I'm leaving a tail thread so that when I finish, I can weave it through some of my beads. And I'm gonna go ahead and just stick one more in there for posterity. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna bring my needle under my four cords here. All right, so I'm not worried about the bar. I'm just going under my four cords. And I'm going to take my six millimeter beads, it doesn't matter what kind you use, and I'm gonna thread three of my beads on. And I'm gonna drop these down. And I'm going to go through those three beads. Now, when I go through the beads, my needle needs to go above these four threads that I have here. So I go through the first bead and then you see my needle goes over the brown cord, through the second bead, over the brown cord, and through the end bead, and again, over the brown cord. So I can see the metal of my needle between or above that brown cord, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to take, and I'm gonna hold on to those three beads, and I'm gonna pull my thread straight out. Okay. And I wanna make sure that it's straight, and those are pretty straight there. So now I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come under those four cords. I'm gonna thread on three of my six millimeter beads. I'm going to bring them down and then pop them into place right above the beads that I already have in place. I'm gonna take my needle and come back through those beads again. And like I said, my needle, it needs to be above the brown cord. So I go through the first bead above the brown cord, through the second bead above the brown cord, and then through the third bead. And sometimes you'll see here, this bead is kind of cornered a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the needle through and then go through that bead. And once I pull the cord out straight, it'll help straighten up that bead and it'll look really nice and straight as you work. So you have two rows of your beads in place now. And it's okay if you use different uh, like shaped beads, you just need to make sure that they're gonna be the same length as the other beads that you're gonna use. Because I originally wanted to throw some little um, six millimeter cubes in here, some thunder polish cubes that we had, but they were not exactly the same size and it was gonna make the piece look a little wavy. So now I've gone under my cords here. I have threaded three beads on, as you can see. And I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go through the first bead over the brown cord, through the second bead over the brown cord, and then through my little end bead here and over the brown cord. Hold my beads in place and pull the thread, just like that. And I'm going to continue to work until I get the length of the beadwork that I need. Now, if you have a question about how much actual beadwork you're gonna need, here is what you need to know. From the knots to the button, that is going to take up a little over an inch, all right? So if you can see here in centimeters, and then the other part here, my loop from the knots to the crimp is again, about an inch and a quarter is what that's gonna take up there. So that's what you'll want to consider 
as your beadwork. This is a seven and a quarter inch bracelet. So this one has 78 beads on it. So you'll just kind of want to keep playing with your counts to see what count you're going to like best so that you can do your beadwork for the bracelet. So as you can see, I have my beads added to the loom. And as far as beadwork is concerned, I've got just about six and a quarter inches of my beadwork here actually on the loom for the size bracelet that I want. So I have my last row completed here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to tie the thread off. Now, this is how Juliana, who invented the jewel loom, this is how she ties her thread off. And this is what I learned from one of her projects. So I'm gonna take the needle and I'm going to loop back through the last bead that I put on. And then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna go under the thread here that is above my little brown thread, okay? And I'm gonna leave a little loop of thread, stick my needle through the loop and pull, putting in a half hitch knot. All right, then I will go through the next bead. And again, I will go under the thread and put in a half hitch knot. Now, one thing that I do on mine that is a little bit different, especially when I'm using this polyester cord, you can pierce the cord so you can stitch right through the cord. So what I like to do is on my last row, once I get my beadwork um, tied off and I'm ready to go, I will actually stitch straight through the cording and through my beads so that way, this thread is really anchored into the cord and the beadwork and all of that. All right, this is, you know, you do you. This is just how I like to do it. It's really nice and secure when I do it that way. So that is how I'm going to do that. And I'm going to trim that little cord there. And then I'm going to take and thread my needle onto this end cord, and I'm gonna do the same thing. It's already tied, but I'm going to stitch it through to get rid of it. Once you've got your threads tied off and finished, then we're ready to take it off the loom. So I'm going to go ahead and take my two pieces of painter's tape off of my thing here, and then I'm gonna use my awl and I'm going to get under this first loop and I'm gonna undo it. Then I'm gonna go under the second loop, undo it. And I'm just going to keep going until I get those loops off. Okay, so now that is untied. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the other end where it has no knots whatsoever, and I'm gonna kind of bend, bend my loom in a little bit more to where I can just slide those right off. And then that way, all I have to do here on this end is again, take my little awl and get under here and untie those. Okay, just like that. So that now I have it off of the loom and I will be ready to put my clasp on. So you'll notice that this end of the bracelet itself has loops and this end has two ends and then one loop. So this is the end I'm gonna use to actually be the crimp part, all right? So that part is going to be this. All right, so I'm gonna flip it this way, this. This part is where I'm gonna put the button on. So um, let me go ahead and grab my button here. 
Okay, so I'm gonna use that same button because I just love that button. And I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna come in and I'm going to cut the loops there of those two end loops. Now, another reason I like to stitch through these ends is because now we are gonna take and tie two of these threads into a knot. And so it kind of just helps to anchor that bead in there so you don't have to worry about it, all right? So I tie these two threads together and then I'm gonna knot these two threads together. So I do that simply by bringing the threads around my fingers, just like this, and then bringing those threads through the loop that I just made. And then I pull this down to the last bead that I put on. And I pull those threads tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim off these two outside threads. I don't need those. So I can trim these off and then if I want to, I can put a little dab of glue right there where the thread is coming out of the knot. So that way I don't have to worry about anything happening here or those coming loose. But I'm gonna wait till I finish before I do that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my button. If you need to, you can take the ends and kind of hit them at an angle like this. Okay, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna take the button and I'm going to cross the threads through the back of the button. So first I'm gonna make sure it's on the way I want it to and I'm gonna cross, put it on one thread and then I'm gonna kind of bend that thread downward like this. And I'm gonna take the other thread and go through it the opposite direction so that it, it each thread goes opposite ways just like this. And I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna measure it out here because I'd already kind of measured out what I like. So I'm gonna leave just a little bit of room there between the knots and the button. And then I'm gonna take my two ends and I'm gonna knot these together. So I'm actually gonna bring this down just a little bit. So I'm gonna do it like this so it gives me a little bit more room. And then I'm going to do my knot. Now you might have to take, if your thread is not long enough, you might have to take an awl or something like that or a pair of pliers to get in and grab, grab the ends. There we go. And like I said, I wanna make sure though that I pull the threads back out to where I want that to be. <coughs> Excuse me, oh goodness. And then I'm going to make a knot in this thread. And I'm actually gonna use my pliers to kind of give the threads a nice tug, just like that. So that now this end is complete and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do, just like I did earlier, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to trim the ends here, just like that. And then if you want to, you can put a little dab of glue here to take care of that. Um, I've not really had to do that on either of my samples that I've done here. And I've worn this one quite a lot. I really, really like this one. And you can see there, it should tray a little dirty, but if you want, put a little dab of glue right there on the end. So then it brings us here to our other end. So what I'm gonna do here is just like on the first end, I'm gonna cut those threads, get everything out of the way here. And I'm gonna make my knots just like I've got on the other end. So it's a little, <laughs> thankfully it's easier to knot these ends. We're gonna put a knot there and bring it down. Okay. And then I'm gonna put a knot here with these two and bring it down.
so that I have my two knots just like that. Now, this is where our crimp comes in. So if you purchase these from me, they come in a two pack. So this means you'll be able to make two bracelets out of your pack, which to me is a fantastic thing. I'm going to take and trim all four cords to be the same length. It'll just make your life easier. Now, I wanna make sure that all four cords here are side by side and they're not twisted or anything like that. Let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit so you can see better. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my crimp and I'm gonna kinda start on one end and work my way. So if I can't really get it in super easy, I'm gonna cut these two end ones at a diagonal. That'll just make your life a little easier. And sometimes if I can't get it right in like I want it, I'll really cut those pointed like that. And that'll help you out a little bit. If it still wants to be a little bit honory, I'll take my round nose pliers and I'll put it in and I'll kind of open up the pliers a little bit you can do this also with your flat nose pliers. You can put them in there and kind of twist them just a little bit just to make the opening of that crimp just a tad bigger. All right. And you could also, if you have it, you can also take and get those cords and you can wax the end of the cords. You can probably also hit it with a um, lighter. I don't have my lighter up here, but you could probably also hit that with a lighter if it's not going to come in exactly like you want it to. There we go, that's a little better there. And sometimes if you can get two cords in and then move it over and get a cord in. There we go, makes life a little bit easier. The biggest thing is before you crimp it, you just have to make sure that all your cords are straight and flat exactly like you want them. Here we go, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure all my cords are flat in that crimp. And I'm gonna take the button itself and I'm gonna bring it around and I'm gonna put the button in between those cords, all right? And I'm going to bring my little crimp down just like that to measure out the buttonhole for my piece. And the great thing for me is I sort of already have two of them done here that are um, exactly the way I want them. So I'm going to leave, let me see here, for my button, again, so you'll kind of have a reference here of where this is gonna go. And before you crimp it, you want to make sure that those four cords are flat. Now you can put some glue on that crimp if you want to. I have not found that necessary whatsoever because I'm gonna come in here with my little bent nose pliers and I grab a hold and I press that side. And then I kind of come around this way and I press from the other side, the bottom side. And the biggest thing, you want to pull it to make sure it doesn't move, and mine is not moving, so I am good here. 
And I'm just gonna come across it just like that. And I'm super happy with that. If you have a pair of nylon jaw pliers, you can also do that with nylon jaw pliers and you'll be good to go. Now, you could take and just cut straight across, but I don't like how that's gonna look. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take each little piece and I'm gonna make a knot at the end of my cord. Now, when I do the little knot here on the end, I am actually going to cut it, but I'm gonna put me just a little dab of glue here because this bracelet, I've had two of these uh, two of these right here come undone on this bracelet and I was able to get them back um, but I like to go ahead and I'll put just a little dab of glue there so you can see there how easy it is to put those little knots in They don't have to be even. I like mine very organic. I don't like all of them the same. So it's up to you. And I'll make the cuts in there so that I have a little finished end. And then when I put it in there, you'll see now that it has a great finish to this bracelet. Now, if you had some maybe size six seed beads, you could put some size six seed beads on here and that would finish out those little ends a little bit better, but I love the organic finish to how this piece is finished off. And you can see here that I've done the same thing on all three of these bracelets. Now, when you get done, if you're like me, you've got this beautiful kind of creamy backdrop to your piece then the great thing is you can use your painter's tape or I go to the Dollar Tree and I buy me one of these little lint rollers and clean it right up. So that is the great thing. And once it kind of gets some on there, it's not real sticky anymore. All you gotta do is peel it off. Well, I say that. <laughs> peel it off and get the rest of it up so that your mat will be nice and clean when you go back and work on it again. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this beautiful cuff bracelet using those cathedral beads or any six millimeter round bead that you have. It's a very quick bracelet to make and it's a great way, honestly, to use up any like extra beads that you have left over from other projects. So I do have all of the materials that you've seen today available on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com and again, if you'll click on the link right below the video, you will see direct links to all the products and all the different things that I use today in my video, including the beaded all pattern link and the bead board link. So guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me and come back next week where we will actually do the June I know it's July, but we're going to do the June retro redo uh, video. The retro redo video honestly kind of got pushed back because the day that I was going to film it, I ended up having to go to the emergency room. I had my first ever kidney stone. So um, that kind of got pushed back. So that is going to be next week. And then we're going to follow it up with the July retro redo. So we got some great things to look forward to. Hope you have guys have a great week and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.